Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Yuzetta Lee Storm and today I am going to be cooking three recipes that you can do around or on the spring equinox along with uh, the beginning of a bonus recipe to dye eggs naturally. So let's get started. Alright, so for the first recipe that we're going to get started is going to be a very simple maple candy. Now we're starting this and then we're going to go forward with some other recipes and then come back to this because of how long it takes to heat up. And all it takes is just uh, pure maple syrup, nothing else, no additives or anything else like that. Um, you just take one cup, you heat it up to 233 degrees and you want to do this on a low heat and you want to make sure that you have a good heavy pot with uh, nice high walls depending on the amount of maple syrup you're using. I am using a 2.85 quart pan, so, but it shouldn't come up more than halfway up and I'll show some uh, footage of that as I can and you'll see what it looks like when the maple syrup bubbles and boils up. Now you want to make sure you have a candy thermometer for this so that way you know what the temperature is. But on my candy thermometer the 233 degree temperature is around the soft ball stage. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started and get that on the stove. Okay, now that I've cleaned up my little bit of maple syrup that I spilt on my counter. I have the syrup on the stove and I have the heat on low as it's going up. The temperature hasn't started to go up yet. Uh, just wanted to let you know that once the maple syrup is in the pot and on the stove, do not touch it with any utensils or anything like that until after you bring it down to 110 degrees temperature. And we'll talk about that more when we get there and that we'll also be using a wooden spoon once we do get to that point. Okay, so the next recipe that we're going to get started, and doesn't really take that long, most of the time takes in heating uh, the liquids, is a non-alcoholic mead, or like a honey tea, basically. And the things that you'll need for that are honey, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, and what I don't have here yet because I need to cut them up in a, a little bit, is an orange and a lemon. And other than that, we'll also need four cups of water. And so let's get started on that. Um, you can use bottled water, tap water. You know, I'm using just a filtered water from my tap. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it's your choice. Um, if you want to go even more natural, you can do things like spring water or water that you've collected yourself and filtered. Um, just make sure it's safe, you know, that you're not drinking anything that has any kind of ickies in it. And then we're going to do one cup of honey. And these little bears that are like the smallest size you can get, maybe not this smallest, this one's a 12 ounce. They're roughly one cup as it is, so you're pretty much going to use this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I got the cracked one. No, you don't. Oh, That's damn. not how this works. Yeah. See? Whole bottle. I'm going to have to go heat this up a little bit um, to get that the rest of the way out like I did the last time. <laughs> from heating it. Okay, now I have the honey added to the water on the stove. I'm going to put my temperature at about 
medium high. Um, depending on your stove setting, you may want to put it between medium low and medium high. And then I'm going to just dissolve the honey down until it's mixed in with the water. After that, I will be adding the ginger, the cinnamon, and the... What did I put on here again? Nutmeg. That's right. I will be adding the ginger and the cinnamon and the nutmeg to the mix, and then I will be mixing it until just before it starts to boil. At that point, I will then slice up the orange and the lemon and add them in as well. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to add the ginger mint. <laughs> so now I'm adding the ginger, the cinnamon, and the nutmeg to the honey and water mix that is currently on the stove. And then I'm going to let it start to come to a boil, a uh, slight simmer, and then we are going to add sliced up oranges and lemons. Just mix it all together and then I'm going to go ahead and add that in and mix it all up. So I just got done washing my orange and my lemon here. Now my lemon is quite large for a lemon. Um, I would not recommend going with this size, but if you like citrus from lemons, you know, go with what you like, right? Average size orange, you know, go with whichever oranges you like. These are the ones we like here. Right about, so. And. In this old house. Right, this old house. So. Now we're just going to slice these lemon, the lemon and the orange into just rings. And like I said, once, uh, once that comes to about a boil, we're going to add these in. And when we add them in, we're going to squeeze them slightly to release more of their juices. And then we're going to let it come to a full boil for about five minutes and then let it cool down and add it to either a pitcher or in my case, what we're doing is I have these cute little bottles that we're going to put it up in. What you're going to want to do is just stir the mead once in a while after you've added it before it starts to, to boil. And um, there might be a little bit of, of stuff that rises up to the top and you want to go ahead and skim that off and make sure the mead looks clear before you add in the lemons. And orange. And orange. Don't forget the orange, okay? <laughs> so I'm just going to start skimming off a little bit of stuff here. I'll show you what it looks like once I skim it off. Alright, that's as good as it's going to get with here. Okay, so that's all the muck I got out. It's not perfect, but, you know, I did the best I could. And that's what it looks like now. I, I could probably get a little bit more out, but I got more cooking to do, so. <laughs> All right, you see the bubbles are starting to form in the bottom of the pan. That means, you know, it's starting to simmer, getting to that boil. So we're going to go ahead and add our oranges and our lemons. Now, here's a tip for me. When you're doing this, get as close and down as far into the pan as you can because Otherwise, you're going to decorate your walls with lemon and orange juice. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to go wash my hands off after I make sure I dunk these in just a wee bit more. This is just something I like to do. I like to dump it in a little bit more just to make sure everything's good and saturated. 
Um, not necessary, just something I do. This is the maple syrup starting to boil. It's uh, just a little over 200 degrees. It hasn't even reached 210 yet. Um, looking at it from here, it looks to be about 204 to 206. And that's in Fahrenheit. Okay, so we've gotten the me to boil and I have now set it off to cool down until I'm able to handle it. And what you're going to want to do after that is strain it before putting it into whatever container you plan on using it for storage. Um, I'm using a cheesecloth and a mess strainer. I'm a little extra. Mess strainer is probably enough. Um, but I'm going to use a cheesecloth just so that way I can also squeeze the orange and the lemon a little bit into the strained liquids. That way we get a little bit more citrusy flavor. And then what I'll use is a... <laughs> And then I'll use a funnel and fill these up um, to about here in both bottles and uh, store them in the fridge. And they should last about a week, maybe a little bit longer. You know, use your better judgment, sniff it, make sure. Uh, my husband and I like to enjoy this in tea as a sweetener because the honey, one cup can make it a little sweet for some people. If you like less, you know, try it at less, see what you like. For now, we're going to move on to the third recipe, and I'll get that set up and uh, tell you what all about it. Okay, so our third recipe for the video is a molasses cake. We will be using whole wheat flour and unbleached flour as the main flour components, and then we'll be also using two types of molasses, both unsulfured and blackstrap. Now, if you are unable to find blackstrap molas molasses, I'm going to stumble over molasses a few times, so I'm not repeating this again. Um, <laughs> If you were struggling to find blackstrap molasses like I was, you can actually take unsalted molasses and boil it for a third time to get blackstrap molasses. Now this stuff does not like to move, and I don't know how many people watching this is aware of the phrase called slow as molasses in January. They were talking about this stuff right here. This stuff is so slow, so thick, and very bitter. So. These are the two molasses this we'll be using. The rest is just going to be baking soda and vegetable oil. The butter is literally just to grease your pan. If you don't want to use butter, well, I'm not using actual butter. I'm using Miyoko's butter, which is made from nuts and plant materials. So, vegetable oil obviously will work, or vegetable short. All right, so let's get started making this cake. Husband's encouraging me off screen, making me goofy. Your husband has the power to edit. <laughs> Here's a tip, put the oil in the cup first, then the molasses won't stick to the cup. Um, another way to do this is hot water in there first, then put the molasses in afterwards. Doesn't work nearly as nice as oil, but, or nothing. <sighs> there you go, see, just yeah. a little bit still stuck yeah. in there. More. Alright, and then we're going to mix this up into a crumble-like consistency, and we're going to take out 
one cup and set aside for topping after we add the hot water and the black strap. There we go, we got good crumbly type consistency. Maybe break it up just a little bit. We're gonna take about a cup of this out, or actually, we're gonna take a cup of this out, and we're gonna set it aside because we're gonna use it as a topping, like a crumble, before we put the finished cake into the oven. And I'm just using the same half cup that I've been using. No reason to make more dishes for yourself than you have to. Okay, I had forgotten to mention that we are going to need also some hot water when we do this. And that's just to help incorporate the blackstrap molasses into the rest of the mix. Otherwise, it'll be really tough and really hard and won't, won't really be cake. It'll be more like uh, a break. <laughs> so I'm going to go over to the, the sink here and I'm going to get some hot water and then we're going to continue on. All right, so we've been cooking the maple syrup now for about 20, 30-ish minutes, um, maybe a little bit longer. I'm a little bad on keeping track of time, but it's only reached 222 degrees, and as you can see, it has now begun boiling even more, and as it go gets closer to the, to the 233-degree temperature, it'll start to boil and rise up the sides of the pan. Yeah, I don't have any tips for not getting black straps stuck to everything. <laughs> it just does. So you want to make sure that everything's nicely incorporated. It's not necessarily going to be a smooth batter, and that's okay. Um, but you want to make sure everything's nice and wet. And as you can see, it almost kind of looks like a sticky ginger cake. I don't know if anybody's ever made one of those or seen what those look like when they're when the batter's being made. And it's very, very fragrant. You can definitely smell the molasses, and it just smells amazing. It looks like I got everything mixed in to the best of my ability and that it's going to do. I'm not seeing any dry areas in the bowl. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take our butter and we're going to just grease up the hole inside of the pan. I use a paper towel. Some people might use a brush. You can use your hands, whatever you're most comfortable with. And there we go. Nice and buttered. Should slide right out. Um, this is an 8 by 8 inch pan. You can also do a 9 inch pan. I'm just going to put this right on in here as I coat my thumb in it. Sort of spread it around a little in the pan because it's not going to really spread on its own. It'll just stay in kind of a clump. Otherwise, get it in those little corners. And it's not really spreading, more like pushing. You're just kind of pushing around, kind of guiding it. Hey, go there, go there, be a little even. You know. And we got that. And then I'm going to go rinse my finger off here. All right, and then we're going to take this last bit of crumb, this uh, bit of the crumble mix that we made, which was just the flour, the, the vegetable oil, and the unsulfured molasses. And we're going to just sprinkle that over the top here. And then we're going to put it into our preheated oven, which is at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and cook it for about 30 minutes until when you insert a toothpick, it comes out clean. Okay, that 
that's what it looks like. I don't know. It's slang. <laughs> see, I was trying to find out. How to, can you see that if I go like this? Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's that's about... what it should look like. And then I'm going to put it in the oven for about 30 minutes. I'm glad you're having fun. Yeah. Team effort, remember? Okay, so the maple syrup finally reached 233 degrees. I have taken it off the heat and I've put it onto my cooling rack here. I'm waiting until it comes down to 110 degrees and then I'm going to take this wooden spoon and I'm going to whip it until it starts to turn uh, kind of milky, uh, caramelly color. I have some caramel candies that I already made. I've got those right here. Pardon my face. And these are about a week old, but they turn out about this color, this little robot mold that I used last time. This time I think I'm just going to, you know, roll them into little balls or whatever, because these molds, they were not fun. Um, they're cute, but they weren't fun. So we'll wait now until that cools down. And while that's cooling down, the meat has also now cooled down, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is strain that and then get that into its bottles. And there you go, a nice sweet mead, uh, non-alcoholic. Um, maybe eventually on the channel I'll do alcoholic mead, um, just not today. Well, hello, Uruuru. There you go, mead. Yes, yeah, sweet girl. Hi. Hi. All right, so the maple syrup is now down to 110. So I'm going to take this wooden spoon and I'm just going to whip it around until it starts to look like those caramel candies did earlier. And you're going to need a lot of arm and muscle strength to do this. It's basically like whipping sugar. So you see it's already starting to get some coloring to it. Not much, and that's just from the air getting worked into it. Get to the point where it's going to start holding form soon, and that's when you want to either drop it or put it into a mold or form it into a ball, you know, whichever you want to do. See how it almost looks like caramel now. There it goes, it's starting to hold shape. All right, I'm going to let these form little patties on a this parchment here and then cool. <laughs> it's already too late. See, it's already starting to harden. Look at that. So I'm going to take it and just sort of form it in a little little balls here. Because this is some really, really, really sweet candy. So, you know, unless you really like maple syrup, like you want to drink it, you you don't want these to be very big, just little balls, and they kind of just melt in your mouth like, I don't know, um, oh, there's these little, there's, there's these sweet little pillow candies that I really like to eat, and they just, they just melt in your mouth, and they're, it's very similar to those. And then, I'm just going to keep doing this until they're all out here. Because see, it just, it's so quick, it's so quick that it just forms right up. See, it's already starting to clump, but it's still warm enough to, to 
to work on, so we'll just keep doing that until I can't anymore. We'll have little, little caramel, or not caramel, maple candies here. You know, you can even just have it like little broken pieces if you like it like that. Um, you can use it as a crumble onto the the molasses cake that we made. Because it is, you know, it's just molasses and flour, so it, some people don't necessarily like the taste of molasses. It's not sweet to them. Um, other people like it just fine like I do. You know, not everybody likes the same thing. There we go, I'm making a mess. <laughs> um, there, maple candies. Okay, so this is the bonus recipe where we're going to dye eggs with onion peels from a yellow onion. Um, you just need one and you put it in your water when you boil the eggs and um, you, if you tune in for next video, you'll see the result. There you go, a molasses cake that looks kind of like the earth. So I hope you all enjoy the spring equinox and these three recipes that I provided. If you tune in next video, I'll have three more recipes and the results of those naturally dyed eggs. Thank you for watching. Bye. Really? Really? Just. Nothing. Heck yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Um. <clears throat>